How's it going, everybody? In this video, we're going to go ahead and take, at our, take a look at our last VPLS specific video when it comes to BGP Auto Discovery before we move into things like HPPLS and beyond, where we're going to take a look at eTree, where we're going to do what we did with VPLS LDP signaling, but uh, still doing the same thing, raw target configuration, get rid of the auto raw target, and then flip over to the raw target import and export policies that we took a look at previously. Same setup before, CSR1, CSR7 are the roots, and CSR3 and CSR7 are, or sorry, CSR3 and CSR5 are the leafs. So at the end, router three and router four, right here, they will not be able to talk to each other. But router three will be able to talk to router one and router five, or uh, yeah, router five, and router four will talk to router one and router five. So that's basically what we're gonna go do. So let's go ahead and dive into the config since we've already laid this out previously. If we look at the show run section L2VPN VFI, we look at BGP Auto Discovery. Underneath this one, we're gonna go to Global Config, and we're gonna go underneath this one right here. And then underneath here, we're gonna type in the Auto Discovery BGP Signaling BGP. And then under here, we'll type in the um, the do show run all section L2 VPN VFI. You'll notice that underneath this one that uh, auto route target is turned on by default. We're going to turn this. Uh, we actually have. I don't think we can do the turn this off. I don't think it's going to let me do that. Yeah. So route target. Um, in this case, route target uh, export will be one colon uh, one. And we'll do a route target import of one colon three. Route target. Route target value created by this VP is already in use. Okay. Is it the fact that I've got this in use by Let's do this. Raw target export. We'll do. Uh, we can pretty much put whatever value we want in here. So we can say one colon and then um, pretty much any value. So I'll just grab something a little bit different. Instead of doing one colon three, I'll make it one colon thirty. So this will be a. And we're going to export one colon ten. We're going to import uh, thirty and then import one colon 50 and 70. So just something like that. And then uh, we'll hit the no auto route target like so. So do show run uh, section L2 VPN and something like that. So this is basically what we're trying to accomplish. So there's that. All right, so we're gonna uh, jump back over to uh, CSR3 and do the same thing. So we're gonna go to global config. We'll type in do show run section L2 VPN VFI. And then underneath this guy right here, we will come underneath here and type in the route target export will be one colon 30. And then the route target import will be one colon 10 and then one colon 70. And then we'll exit out, let that guy do its thing. And then same thing with five. Do show run section L2 VPN VFI. And we'll say the route target export will be one colon uh, 50. And the route target import will be one colon 10 and 70. I'll exit out of there. And on CSR7, we'll go to global config, do show run section L2 VPN, and we'll grab this guy right here. And then route target, actually I need, I need to go to CSR5 and type in, um, let's just copy and paste what I, copy it in and no auto route target and I didn't do that on CSR3 uh, no auto route target 
do that. So that'll fix that problem. And then CSR7, route target export will be 1 colon 70. The import will be uh, 10, 30, and 50, respectively. And then no auto route target. All right, so now that we got all that squared away and ready to go, actually, let's go ahead and just end out because I don't know how far out I have to go before it triggers. End out and then uh, end out. There we go. So CSR1 obviously is getting a lot more updates. Uh, apparently, you have to get all the way out of the VFI in order to trigger the updates and things like that. No big deal. No harm, no foul. But uh, now we've switched over to an e-tree design. So as you can see, it's not very difficult. It only took you a couple of minutes. And one of the things, if you were in the lab, um, the way that they worded questions in the lab is you knew what they were at. They, you knew what particular t feature they were looking for. They were very specific in that. They didn't say, uh, it wasn't very vague, right? So you were able to very quickly identify that you knew that it was gonna be layer two connectivity. Whether they said, you know, uh, these three CEs must be able to ping each other inside of the same subnet. It's very obvious that that's a layer two VPN feature. So how they word the questions is then uh, based off of how they're wording it, you're able to pick out, uh, and they're pretty specific. They'll, they'll come in and they'll say, if they want BGP auto discovery with LDP signaling, they're gonna say, give me, uh, allow the PE routers to automatically discover each other and use LDP to signal the, the pseudo wires. So you know what they're talking about. If you've done even just a little bit of homework on this, it's not very difficult for you to figure out what they're asking for. Sometimes they can be a little vague, but most of the time they're pretty clear. But um, just to give you a couple of examples of what I'm referring to, not that any of the examples I'm giving you are things that um, were actual questions that I saw. So uh, with that being said, with, uh, with the way we have it set up now, we should be able to go to router one and do a ping to 10.110.110.3. We should be able to ping that. We should be able to ping five. We should, and we should be able to ping four. Excellent. Now on router three, we should be able to ping 10.110.110.1. And we should be able to ping five, but we should not be able to ping four. And so far we are not, which is a good sign. So if we go over to router four, ping 10.110.110.3, we should not be able to ping this guy. And so far we're not able to. So hub and spoke is working the way that we're intending it to, but I will up arrow and I will ping router one and ping that and ping router five and having no problem pinging that once it arps, there it goes. So as you can see, E-Tree is pretty straightforward as well, except for we're just using BGP as the signaling uh, for the labeling and the signaling as well as the discovery. That's pretty much it, ladies and gentlemen. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the comment section below. And until next time, take it easy.